Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Peter Jennings. I go by CSU Ram 88 across the daily fantasy industry and back again at Fantasy Labs doing another lineup review. Uh, as you can see here, I took eighth in the Thunderdome, but do have a, a good showing finally. Uh, it was actually a great week of golf for me uh, in tournaments, and I ran uh, two cash game teams, um, uh, one of which ended up taking down the 1K, which I'll, I'll show in a second. But uh, I debated these two teams, and this is the team I ended up throwing in the Thunderdome. Uh, I did so just because I thought Chapel might be a little bit lower owned uh, than some of the guys I have in my other lineup. So uh, let's dive quickly into this lineup. Um, Chapel obviously being the big disappointment, making bogey on 18. I feel like that always happens to me, but I'm sure a lot of people think that. Uh, I just feel like I've hit those guys who just keep missing the cut on the last hole uh, on that day, and it's just so frustrating. But um, Chapel looked like he was going to have a great week when he uh, eagled uh, early in his round uh, on Thursday and just never really got it going. So frustrating especially with his uh, 74 there on uh friday so don't mind the play on him i think he's hot i think he's been playing really well and uh he's a great ball striker which is really important at this course hits a lot of greens so uh, i thought he was a great play duffner uh was in all my lineups essentially he worked out really well uh liked his, his his setup here i talked about him on the model uh he ranked really high as well as emiliano grio who was my lock cheap play you can see both of these guys were super low owned or super high owned in this tournament um, and we're just sharp plays overall. Grio, um, no, not a great weekend, but still uh, at that price uh, was fine. Uh, Colt Nost, uh, really disappointing kind of finish for him on the weekend, especially there on Saturday. 55% owned here. He was basically a lock for me in cash as well. Uh, same thing with Danny Lee. I was surprised to see him at 55% owned. Um, interesting that he's so heavily owned i do like the form that he's in he's definitely a good ball striker overall but 55 percent was a little surprising to me especially at his price and then ryan palmer i was all in on the, the three guys I, I pretty much had in every lineup were duffner Grio, and palmer and uh, i really wanted that um you know basic member edge i guess you could say uh, the subjective edge that he is a member at colonial and uh, I thought that was a huge uh, edge for him, and he had a great tournament all four rounds under 70, got a ton of great bonuses, which was massive for me, and uh, played incredibly well. So Ryan Palmer uh, was the guy that differentiated, and as you can see here, I took eighth. Uh, one player I respect a ton is the Godfather, uh, just an incredible player, one of the top guys in PGA DFS for sure. Uh, he had a great lineup here with Grio, Hadwin, Hearn, Na, Palmer, and Spieth. Uh, great, great going on Spieth. Um, who, you know, was an interesting tournament play for me for sure. And maybe I should have considered him a little bit more in cash games, but uh, his price kind of was tough for me with the roster construction I wanted to have. But great lineup here. And if you're looking for someone to, to look at lineups from, definitely recommend the Godfather, who's definitely one of the best in the game. So uh, Hearn was uh, an interesting pick, 25% owned, and then Hadwin at 15%. So you can see here the ownership, uh, you know, rarely do you see guys be 5%, 10% owned um, for some of these top guys where we're all kind of playing uh, the chalkiest plays in the Thunderdome. So great lineup for him, and uh, it was a lot of fun to, to sweat this tournament. Uh, more fun to sweat this tournament, though, that I ended up taking down here at the clubhouse. Uh, first was 20000 so that was certainly nice. Uh, I've been hemorrhaging money in PGA the last three weeks after just an incredibly hot stretch there in April. Uh, so it was nice to bounce back. Uh, I had this team in cash as well. Uh, and I almost threw this in the Thunderdome, and, and the reason I didn't was I preferred the, the tee times and the setup of the other team. I had Kucher here, who I thought was going to be very heavily owned, uh, and I just I went the other direction in the, the Thunderdome. So this is the other cash game team that I had. Uh, I only fired this tournament once. Um, kind of I'll probably fire once or twice most weeks, uh, depending on how things are going, uh, but definitely like this tournament as well. You can see here I had the same core with Duffner, Grio, and Palmer, who I talked about. Uh, I really like those guys. Uh, also had Nost in this lineup, so really it's just a two for two. Uh, Kucher and English versus Chapel. Um, versus Chapel, and let's see who was the other guy. Chapel and Danny Lee. So that's a, that, that seems reasonable on the surface. Who you like more? Um, I'm definitely high in English uh, going forward. Uh, definitely playing a lot better, and especially on ball striking courses, I think he's a great option. So. English was a, a nice play for me, uh, worked out really well, had a great chance to win. Even with two duds, uh, I did really well because I had four of the you know top 10 guys or top six guys with Palmer, Kucher, English, and Duffner. So uh, a lot of names you recognize at the top, the Godfather, Notorious, Wilson 1, Hoop 2410, and great DFS golfers, A.E. Jones. So 
felt like a little bit more predictable week. I felt like the model that I made uh, for the model preview was right on. If you followed that advice, you did great. Uh, that certainly hasn't been the case every week, but um, you know, I try not to be results oriented, but it is nice to see uh, good results after a stretch of, of not so good results. So hope this is really helpful for you guys. Interesting to see the ownership percentages here. Um, one thing I will say, just an overall thought, Spieth, uh, I thought might be a little bit more contrarian tournaments. I said that in the podcast. Come to the conclusion, Spieth will never be low owned. Uh, the only example that he was low owned was when I played him in the Masters in the Thunderdome at 3%. But um, in general, he's just never going to be low owned. So something to always be cognizant of. These big names, even if they're in bad form, uh, they're not going to be low owned. So that's something I'm taking into account for tournaments. And uh, as always, I want more feedback on this, guys. Hopefully it was helpful to, to see the, the teams. I'll always do the Thunderdome regardless. And then if I happen to have a big score, I will loop that lineup in as well. So hope to see more Fancy Labs members at the top of leaderboards. And, of course, good luck in all your contests going forward.